Oh, hi again. Well, let's go on to the next lesson while we're here. Lesson 104. It's about Sweden and the Thirty Year War. I thought that was kind of weird that they related Sweden to this Thirty Year War. Although Sweden was a big part of this Thirty Year War, and after this war it became a big powerful country over all of Europe. And I never did know this. So what do you know about Sweden? <laughs> huh? Well, have you ever heard of Olaf or Sven, Elsa, Anna? Kind of Swedish names, kind of a Sweden frozen. Frozen came from that land up north with Scandinavia and possibly Sweden. Well, let's talk about Sweden. Um, it's the third largest country about the size of California, the third, third largest country in Europe. Um, but it has the smallest population with the population of only 10 million. You see Germany at the time had 81 million, France 67 million at that time, but 97% um, of the land um, was uninhabited. So Sweden's actually a very small um, country population-wise. Um, and as you see, I um, wanted to show you, and there's a picture in your book. Let me show it to you, which one I'm talking about. This one. So let me put that there for a second so you can look, look at it. So you'll see that Norway, you can see where Norway is bordering um, right next to Sweden there. Can you see that on that peninsula? And you'll also see the Baltic Sea um, to the south the Gulf of Bothnia to the east. And you'll also see that Denmark is below and juts out there. Can you see Denmark there jutting out there? And um, Finland too. And these areas are all kind of called Scandinavia. That's what they called them all together. And most of this, most of this area is like, um, of Sweden especially, is a lot of islands. In fact, there's tens of thousands of little islands um, all the way through and around that area. Hmm. And so you see the ca capital there is Stockholm. And it's on 14 islands and on its east shore. And you'll see it also has a lot of lakes. You can't really see in this picture, but it has a lot of lakes. Like, you know, um, thousands, thousands of lakes. 50 bridges there. You see down there, you'll see how, where you'll see the 30-year war occurring. You'll see where Germany is and all. So keep Keep track of this map here because it's kind of going to go into everything we're discussing here today. So going on, yes, there's lots of lakes, lots of bridges, 50 some plus bridges there. There's three geographical areas. One is called Gotland, which is the low hills in the southern plain. They have mild winters because the Gulf Stream actually flows through that area. And then there's Svealand, which is the, we're in the middle part, which has taller trees and snow in the winter. And then there's Norland, and they're in the mountains, the very cold, the very cold, um, long, long winters. But still mild summers, not really hot summers. But above that Arctic Circle, and you can look on that map again, um, is where Sweden, um, the, the um, temperature drops below 60, below zero sometimes. And also, um, they have a very, very long, long, um, as their winters, very, I think it's 50, oh, 32 days of pure darkness in the winter and 56 days of light during the summer. They call it the land of the midnight sun. So the descendants were from the Germanic tribes from the Baltic Seas called the Finns and the Laps. And so see that top part they'll call Lapland. And this, this is where they herd reindeer, you know, most of the time. As you, as you saw probably in the, in the movie of Frozen, huh? But the reindeer up there. And um, they also have a lot of forests. You know, 69% is forest and they, and they mine a lot of iron. But do you know that they don't have very many farms at all, it looks like. Only 7% of the land is good from, for, for farming. So that's kind of a big deal because they'd have to get um, their exports from forest and iron ore and maybe fishing. 
they probably eat a lot of fish. So what about the history? Because we're studying history, right? Well, the, we know about the Vikings, as you remember. And the Vikings from Norway and from Sweden, um, the Scandinavian countries, the Vikings covered all of this land. And we know, like in the year 1000, um, that the Vikings did come to America. We know about Leif Erikson, but I bet you didn't know Leif Erikson was a missionary. But that's another story. And, but also, they mainly, they didn't mainly come to America. They came to other places. They went actually east to the Baltic coast, to the Black Sea, to the Caspian Sea, to the Byzantine Empire, and all the way to Baghdad. And as you know, we studied some Russian history, and even a lot of the Russian rulers and a lot of the people were Vikings in Russia. And that's clear to the east. So we have Sweden, the, this land, actually covering a lot of, lot of areas in a lot of countries. And the gospel? The gospel came to Sweden by a monk named Ansgar. And that was in the mid-800s. Not 1800s, but 800s, so a long time ago. He's called the Apostle of the North. King Olaf Skutkungung. Maybe I could say that again. Olaf Skutkonon um, was the king of Sweden, and he became a believer in the year 1000. And he was Olaf, we'll just call him one of King Olaf, you know, it's a little easier. And he was the one that actually sent Leif Erikson as a missionary to Greenland, Iceland, and even possibly to America. Do you remember that with Eric the Red and Leif Erikson? King Gustav I um, was the first um, missionary type king to declare that Lutheran, Lutherans would be the, the national church, would be Protestants. And he declaimed this, proclaimed this after the Reformation um, and that, that, um, that they would not be a Catholic nation. So that was a big thing and that was in the Reformation and we're going to talk more about that. But in 1280, the feudal system, they had castles just like England, just like France, just like Germany. And King Mag Magnus Lagulas, we'll just call him King Magnus, um, he, just, he started the feudal system. And he was the king of all the lords of the kingdoms. In 1300, the Black Plague, do you remember that? Many, many, many Swedish people died in the Black Plague. In fact... It was really, really, really sad because even whole towns were destroyed um, in, the, in the country of Sweden. In 1389, um, after many conflicts, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, um, they accepted um, Queen Margaret II of Denmark as ruler for a while. And then in 1527, we have Gustav I becoming the Swedish king. And then we have this 30-year war, which is one of the most tragic events in history because it's a religious war against, between Christians, really. And it's like, um, should we take up arms? What are we going to do, you know, as a country? Who are we going to support? The Pope? Are we going to be Catholic? Are we going to be Protestant? What are we going to do? These things were questions that the countries of Europe had. And Sweden was, dominant, was a dominant military power during this time for the Protestants. And after, in fact, after the 30-year war, year war, they became um, a big military power in Europe. You know, I never knew that. So I'm studying history along with you. So let's take a break before I get into this 30-year war and what it was about. It's something I don't really like to talk about. But I think we need to know. Because once we learn about the mistakes of man, maybe, just maybe, we won't make them again. Hopefully. But we know all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. But then there's the gospel, which is love peace which unites us as believers in Jesus Christ.